Hello everyone, I'm Dick Dad, and I'm delighted to see you again on His Colors on 13-way radio and television channel. In the early days of autumn, Hui becomes more gentle and charming with its cool, pleasant weather. Let's explore the colors of this beautiful land through our familiar segments. Discover exciting destinations, cultural experiences, and unique cuisine in Hui in the news. In I love Hui, let's meet those who cherish and dedicate themselves to the craft of making lion heads in Hui. At the end of the program, join us as we explore the art of raised plaster decoration at Imperial Kaiding's tomb in the beauty of Hui. Experiencing traditional Mid Autumn Festival in Hue is a program organized by 13 Hue Department of Tourism in collaboration with Vietnam Travel Magazine, held at Quoc Hoc Hue Stage. The program aims to honor and preserve the traditional cultural beauty of the Mid Autumn Festival while conveying profound messages to residents and visitors. The Experiencing Traditional Mid-Autumn Festival in Hue program highlights various unique activities such as the Lion Dance Festival featuring teams from within and outside the province and the traditional Mid-Autumn Feast. Additionally, a floral offering ceremony to honor parents involving 300 families created a warm and emotional festive atmosphere. The program also included meaningful activities such as visiting and giving gifts to children at several social protection centers in Hue City, aiming to share and support those difficult circumstances and bring joy to children during the full moon festival night. With its diverse and rich activities, the experiencing traditional Mid Autumn Festival in Hue program has left a deep impression, contributing to promote the cultural image of Hue to both domestic and international visitors. It is expected that this program will become an annual event associated with the Hue Festival in the coming years. As the Mid Autumn Festival approaches, many types of mooncakes are available on the market. However, many young people in Hue still wish to show their skills by making their own mooncakes. With a variety of shapes, vibrant colors, and diverse ingredients, these handmade mooncakes have created new and unique flavors for those who enjoy them. To make high-quality handmade mooncakes, the ingredients are selected and prepared meticulously, flour, salted eggs, sugar syrup, various nut. Essential tools include molds for shaping the cakes, an oven, and other necessary equipment. The process of preparing ingredients, shaping the cakes, placing them in molds, removing them, and baking them for just the right amount of time are the unique secrets of each baker. Moreover, consumer preferences have also inspired bakers to be more creative with traditional recipes. As the Mid-Autumn Festival arrives, gathering with family, savoring its piece of mooncake and enjoying the lively sounds of the lion dance will create meaningful moments not only for children but for everyone. Recently, at the Haivan Gate National Monument, the People's Committee of 13 Hue Province and the People's Committee of Da Nang City held a meeting to discuss and agree on the coordination for managing and promoting the value of Haivan Gate National Monument. The project for the preservation, restoration and promotion of the Haivan Gate Monument began in December 2021 with a budget of 42 billion Vietnam dong, carried out by the Hue Monuments Conservation Center in coordination with the Department of Culture and Sports of Da Nang City. Since the 1st of August, the Haivan Gate Monuments has been opened for free visits. 
During this time, the parties have also gathered community feedback to finalize plans and complete service facilities to ensure visitor safety. At the meeting, both sides spent time discussing various issues, including promotional activities, exhibitions, visitor services and ticket prices. After agreeing on a common ticket price for visiting the Haibungay Monument, expected to range from 50,000 to 70,000 Vietnam Dong, and completing the planning and refurbishment of the surrounding premises and infrastructure, it is expected that an inauguration ceremony will be organized by both localities between December 20th and 30th this year to officially launch the Haibang Gate as a tourist attraction. As night falls and the city lights up, Hue suddenly become more dynamic and bustling with its pedestrian streets, attracting the large number of locals and tourists. Let's experience the cool and joyful atmosphere on the walking streets of Hue. Strolling along Wendy Kyo walking street, gazing at the shimmering colors Dung Tien Bridge, listening to the sounds that drift closer and farther from the dragon boat gently gliding down the river. Alongside Nguyen Ding Kyo Street, the Lim Wooten Walking Bridge has also become a familiar spot for the people of Hui every evening. Breathing in the fresh air from the Hung River, you will feel as if all the stress and fatigue of the working day are completely relieved. Let's take a stroll around Hai Badung Walking Street, a vibrant lighthouse here with all three streets brightly lit up and lively sounds filling the air from 6 p.m. to midnight every Friday, Saturday and Sunday. This is uh, weekend. I really uh, like uh, this. The atmosphere is very cool. It's wonderful. I love walking in the evening, so I often walk. The quiet atmosphere and not too hot weather make me feel great. And last night, I had street food with Mrs. Lee jong yeon in front of the Senior Star Center. If you love peace, tranquility and cultural activities, the Hong Tai Night Street will be an ideal choice. This street welcomes visitors and locals for shopping and experiences every Friday and Saturday night. The walking streets are usually where people come for entertainment and fun on weekends. The Huang Tan Night Streets has a more cultural beauty and is more characteristic of Hui. Hui at night may not be as splendid and luxurious as many other big cities, but it has a certain charm and allure that makes it unforgettable for many visitors. Originating from China, lion dancing has gradually become a cherished cultural feature of Vietnam, symbolizing wishes for prosperity, luck, peace, and a life filled with joy and happiness. Especially, the lion features are indispensable, adding meaning and atmosphere to the children's festival day. In Hue, the craft of making lion hats has been diligently preserved and maintained by artisans and workers for decades. Let's meet and hear their stories in I Like Way. Đảm bảo đôi chắc là cây cột này em lấy băng trái đấy nè, để cho nó cứng đấy. Chứ mấy là nó mềm, nó dẻo, nó dũng. Đẹp đẳng thôi mình về thôi, không vắng thôi. Đẹp sáu lặng thôi mình vẽ thôi, đâu chờ thì đơn giản thôi, vẽ vai đường thôi, còn đâu đặt là vẽ nhiều lắm. Chứ nghe đến có ai vậy mà, nghe trung thẩm ở huyện có ai vậy mà, như từ Lan đó. At 5 a.m., Mr. Sin and his wife are already busy with the initial steps of making the framework for paper lion hats. 
They have been creating this paper lioness for almost 30 years, a job that helped them raise their two sons. Although these paper lion heads are quite simple and considered a low-cost product during the mid-autumn festival, the process of making them is still quite elaborate and meticulous. Cũng đoàn dạng đi là là khó nhất. Cho về về bố văn trẻ bình thường. Ta bị khuôn ra là khó lâu nhất. Dạng quen trẻ là lô lô đang to. In a small hamlet on Bat Bang Street, Bùi Quốc family members are also carefully working on the first steps of their own lion heads. Here, the lion head frames are not made of paper but are crafted using the main materials of rattan and bamboo. Their hands are incredibly skillful. Sống đáng mắt, sống hiện tại đang làm cái miệng đấy. Cái chí cũng khó hết. Thì phải tăng nắng tỉ mỉ rửa thôi chứ. Nói chúng là phải chịu khó. Chịu khó là làm được, cũng chịu khó là chịu. These young artisans are the third generation in a family with a tradition of making lion heads, inheriting the craft from the grandfather and father. The lion has a combined traditional elements with modern features to suit market preferences. This is reflected in the frame where aluminum is added to the handle to make the lion head sturdy and durable while still being light enough to prevent the dancer from tiring. Decorations like hand-painted motifs with color powder can also be replaced with the brocade fabric with redesigned patterns. Details such as eyes, nose, mouth, horns, and whiskers, instead of being painted, can be attached with similar tools, adding more vividness and strength to the lion head. Đầu tiên là mình phải khâu văng lên trước, phải khâu văng mau lên trước. Rồi sau đó mình tố, mình tố mình đưa mình đi đường chỉ đằng sau. Thì những đi đi những đôi đường khâu văng mà dài và sắc nét nhỏ hơn, thì hiện là loại những có mà những con lươn mà hiên hiên giống như đầu chẹp là mình đi những cái văn cục cục hơn, nó to hơn, đôi vòng thì dự hơn, là mình cho những những đứa nẹt nhỏ hơn, mạnh hơn, dài hơn, nó thể hiện ra cũng những dự sắc nẹt hơn dự hơn. Tôi lớn ở huyện mình là hiện thực chúng là nhiều màu sắc, vẽ lên nhiều màu sắc, lăn lên từ nổi. An interesting fact that not everyone knows is that. In addition to the different sizes, the lion head in Huey can be distinguished between male and female. Each has its unique shape and pattern. Cái đầu cải là khác nhau hoàn toàn với cái đầu đực. Và hiện tại em đang làm con lưng cải nữa. Thì cái mỏ nó băng nữa. Mà cái xương tròn, cái đầu cải thì hiên hiên, mà đầu đực là dự. Cái mỏ nó vặn lên, nó cong lên. Và cái xương giòn. The craft of making lion heads has not faded away in Hue. It is being revitalized by dynamic young artisans who dare to think and act. They not only inherit the craft's essence from the generations before them, but also adapt and learn new techniques. Their creativity adds unique features to their generation, resulting in more beautiful, attractive and durable products. The art of raised plaster decoration is a material and technique quite common in most of his monuments and plays an important role in shaping the decorative art of the Nguyen era. Among these, the tomb of Imperial Kaiding is one of the constructions that showcases the sophistication and pinnacle of raised plaster art. In this, the beauty of Hui, we invite you to admire the beauty of Imperial Kaiding's tongue and the extremely raised blood of art of the Nguyen dynasty. Within more than 6,000 square meter complex of the tomb, from the first steps leading to the courtyard, to the beading area, and outside the main serene, 
raised plaster features appear one after another, guiding the viewer into the world of art. The themes in raised plaster art always comply with the general principles of the subject groups, decorated with thousands of different motifs, straight in content yet liberal in expressive technique. The dragon image is popular and occupies a dominant position in the decoration of the Nguyen Dynasty Emperor's palaces in general, and in Emperor Kaiding's tongue in particular. It symbolized the king's authority and the dynasty power, representing many meanings about the universe and human life. The dragon motifs decorating Emperor Hiding's tomb are depicted from various ways and in different shapes. Other features such as the unicorn, turtle, phoenix, bat, fish, flowers and leaf, the swatika, and the character for longevity are also crafted with delicacy and fitness. Despite the passage of time and impacts of war and natural disasters, Imperial Kaiding Tang still preserved the distinctive artwork of the Nguyen Dynasty, especially the raised blossom art. This allows us lovers the opportunity to admire and in turn cherish the priceless treasures left by our ancestors. Art elevates ourselves, letting them soar high. Art is also the thread that connects people, guiding us to what to do, the good and the beautiful in life. Hui is a city rich in artistic values, inviting you to explore and listen to the voice of your own soul. Let's continue to explore Hui in the upcoming episodes of Hui's Colors. For now, goodbye and see you next time.